Forgive me, I need to go back to the beginning. My name is Thomas Mick. I am the uh, principal author of the blog um, at commonsensetome.com. Um, you can also find me on Facebook uh, at uh, www.facebook.com slash thomas.mick. This is a recitation of my article, A New Plan of Action for Restoring the American Republic. And without further ado, since writing my article, A Plan of Action, in January of 2014, the tyranny of the oligarchs controlling America has become increasingly and openly hostile to American principles and the natural rights of the American people. The oligarchs seem to have no more need for masking either their contempt for individual liberty or their intentions for its destruction. The plan I proposed to the people in 2014 utilized elements that included the grand jury under common law as well as constitutional sheriffs as important components for identifying and removing agents of the oligarchy in our local government. My thinking along those lines has changed dramatically since. In late February of 2015, I came across a research report I had read initially in the late 90s, a report I couldn't bring myself to accept at that time, since it seemed to contradict my oath to support and defend the Constitution that I had taken in 92. I just wasn't ready in my heart and spirit to accept what the report revealed, that the Constitution hasn't been in force and effect since March 27, 1861 when seven of the 34 states in the Union at that time walked off the floor of Congress and seceded from the Union. It wasn't a lack of quorum that destroyed the Union, but the refusal of the northern states to address the legitimate issues of the South, namely to stop forcing the, them to pay a disproportional share of the expenses of the federal government through the confiscatory tariffs imposed on their imports from Europe in exchange for their tobacco and cotton exports. The intransigence of the northern mercantile states caused the separation of the southern agrarian ones by violating the natural rights of those states to defend their economies from the attacks of the majority votes in the north. Under the Union, the South simply could not muster the votes in Congress to represent their interests against the greedy bastards in the north. I believe this violation of natural law, along with the willingness of the North to force the South to remain in spite of their tyranny, invalidated the Constitution that formed the Union. All of this history is to illustrate the fact that we've not been under the Constitution for over 154 years as of the date of this writing. All of the discussion of constitutional law is meaningless in our fight to return to liberty, and the oligarchs know it. They dispensed with that troublesome document generations ago. We've been living under an illusion they needed to maintain while they subtly and slowly transformed us into a corporate fiction under their rules. Returning to liberty will not require enforcing a constitution that is lost in history, but returning to the foundation that was established with the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. Only then can we proceed forward in freedom and either correct the defects that allowed the Constitution to be subverted and destroyed, or institute a different form that will better secure our natural rights. Returning to the foundation America was formed on is much easier than trying to re-establish government under the Constitution. There was no President, Congress, and Supreme Court to deal with, or the regulations that defined them and delegated them power. Only the states themselves. Because of the actions of our government under King George III, the First and Second Continental Congresses were formed to bring representatives from the state legislatures together to better deal with the issues of the Crown and try to resolve our differences. But for the most part, Americans had become accustomed to managing their own affairs and governing themselves. Parliament and the Crown were distant and unable to deal with the day-to-day -day issues of the colonies. We had governors beholden to the crown and tax collectors. But most of the real governance was done by fellow Americans through our own colonial governments. 
Americans naturally assumed a posture of independence long before the Declaration of Independence was ever proposed. The plan. The plan is quite simple and based on just two sentences in the Declaration of Independence. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Unquote. Consistent with the necessary first law of nature, the right of self-defense, the first step of the community is to form natural law militias from among the armed people of the community for defending the natural rights of the people within the community against any threat posed against them. The militia should elect officers from among their ranks and no active government official in any office is eligible to serve in the militia. The militia must provide their own arms and implements of war and be proficient in their use. The community at large should provide logistical support for the militia during times of conflict, such as ammunition, medical supplies, and services, as well as other needs of the militia that may arise in defense of their natural rights. Since a militia consists of members of the community they're defending, it only makes sense to support them in their lawful duty. Once the militia has been formed and discipline established, the people within it should exercise their natural right of self-defense as follows. Beginning at the most local level, determine who in government office is securing your natural rights or attacking them. Once that has been determined, the following must be done depending on the status of the officer. Only offices that are necessary to assist the people in the community to secure their natural rights from harm by others should be formed and supported. If an office exists that serves to attack the natural rights of the people for the benefit of others by plundering or otherwise oppressing the people, abolish it simply by removing all the officers within it and not replacing them. If an office exists that serves to secure the natural rights of the people, support it and the officers within it. If an officer is securing the natural rights of the people by their official actions, support them. If an officer is attacking the natural rights of the people by their official actions, remove them by any means necessary and replace them with someone who secures them. This completes the new plan of action to restore America to its original foundation of the laws of nature and nature's God.